Hi everyone, welcome to eLearn Chat, where you always learn something new. And today we're going to meet someone that we haven't had on before. We're looking forward to seeing her, Amy Morrissey from Artisan uh, Solution, Artisan Learning. I'm sorry, and um, joining me right next to me, riding shotgun. Here she is. Mm. Hi there. The calamity uh, Jane. Calamity you know, Jane. Uh, you know, as uh, as 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 we sadly have just lost, you know, Doris Day. Oh, I and didn't hear that. One of my favorite movies. One of my favorite movies she was ever. Fun. She was to fun. Be calamity yep. Jane. Well, today we have Calamity Leslie with us. Leslie Price. She's with <laughs> www.learnappeal.com. Check it out. I'm, I'm sure you're going to like what they're doing. And by the way, I heard from Eric Kamori the other day. He sent me a note on Facebook. I love Eric. He's such oh, a good guy. Lovely. But anyway, lovely. let's get on with the show. Here we go. And we are back, almost back. Here we are. Now we're back. Yeah. And we've got with us Amy, Amy Morrissey from Artisan Learning. How are you, Amy? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing great. And uh, we didn't Good. say this in the intro, but we had Amy on actually once before, but we had a problem with audio, a bad problem that kind of killed us about oh, 10 no, minutes no, into no, the show. No, so Rick. No, we're back. Rick. Hmm? You. You, we, you yeah, we, uh, our side Amy of the we. And, yeah. Amy and I, Amy <laughs> and I had a lovely chat, didn't we, Amy? We, we did. I kept saying, you know, they're telling us to get off. But, but anyway, <laughs> what were you saying? We just kept going. It didn't matter. To <laughs> and it worked. We were, we were just dead. We're dead in the water watching going, I don't know. I don't know if they can hear each other or not, but we can't hear anybody. <laughs> But it was a, a bad cable that just happened to go loose for a second. It was just very weird, a weird thing. We've never seen that in 10 years of these, but it happens. So, hey, I'm so happy to be a part of the inaugural bad cable. It, yeah. Yeah, it was you fun. You be known for something, Rick. Yep, yep, it's good. But, Amy, you were going to talk today about things, things that everyone's talking about out there, but companies aren't necessarily implementing or doing and things like that. Um, tell us a little bit first about what Artisan Learning does. Yeah, so Artisan E-Learning is a custom e-learning development firm. We support uh, clients big and small and um, are very ingrained in the industry. So, you know, we go to all the conferences, we speak at the conferences, and one of the strategies that we try to think about is how do you determine when you're at a conference what is the thing that your clients are going to want in six months a year three years five years and what are the things that are just kind of cool fun things to do at a conference mm -hmm. and so we're always looking at our market and certainly there are you know markets for all things but our market one of the kind of as you said like sort of a litmus test is when do our clients start uh talking about it and then finally when do they start asking for whatever it is and then kind of how do we respond along the way so that's kind of what we do and how we're sort of thinking about this topic it's a good topic because there's a lot of memes out there there's a lot of new ideas that aren't really all that new or or the memes haven't been done before they've just been kind of rebranded remarketed a little bit so it sounds different and i never understood why we do that but it it makes for an interesting thing because what's old is new and what's new is old. You wind up kind of in the same situation all the time. But you have a presentation you wanted to share with us. Well, I mean, I've got different samples of things. So, ah, uh, for example, last time we talked, Leslie and I were talking about um, how uh, virtual reality is kind of all the mm -hmm. rage at conferences and you go you know, we just came from ATD ICE and you could see in booth after booth, you know, the people with the glasses on and moving their hands around and what's happening and um, and it's really cool technology and there's and you're what I'm seeing more and more in conferences is really good application of that whether it's you know virtual reality augmented reality really cool stuff going on with artificial intelligence um, but for us you know we're not yet getting people calling us up on the phone and saying I want I want virtual reality for my soft skills training right Right. Um, and I and I can agree with you totally. Not one client we have or know has any interest in it. 
But mm -hmm. it is a cool technology, but that doesn't mean it works for everything or everybody. And, um, and, and, you, and it's tricky. You have to know how to shoot the videos or pictures. It's so easy to get yourself in the video when you don't want to. It's a little tricky. <laughs> And, yeah. and everybody finds it out the minute they get their 3D, the 360 camera, and they do it, and they go, I have in the pick. How do I get myself out? And right. that just takes some practice. And, yeah. But and a lot where, of it, I think, I goes think back to what that, it is we're I trying think, to. Okay, let's start no, over. I Amy? Say, where I think it's really useful is when you're teaching vocational skills. Mm -hmm. So if you're teaching people about, you know, plumbing or you know electricity or this is this is where i've seen it done incredibly well or health and safety on how you evacuate places mm -hmm. and things happen and it's not really then so much about um what it's not also what you do right it's what the implications would be is if you don't do it right and I think mm -hmm. that's where it's got a use. And also in the UK, they're using it with um, vocational skills to help young people, say plumbers, electricians, um, you know, join as carpenters, almost like get a head start before they go out on the job. So when they go out on a job, instead of it being everything all brand new, they've got at least a good idea of what to expect. Well, Leslie, you, you teed up really well one of the things that happened with us when you were talking about um, uh, how do I make choices when I'm trying to get in and out of things. And so uh, about a, maybe a little more than a year ago, we had a client come to us and they wanted to do something a little bit different with their active shooter training. Hmm. Um, and that would be a really good opportunity for something like virtual reality, but we didn't have the price tag or the, you know, right technology. And, you know, we, were, we just weren't there yet. That's not really what we do. And so we got creative and we said, you know, what is it we're trying to accomplish? And, you know, what, what are you trying to solve? So the first thing that we really worked with that client on was in something like that with an with an active shooter scenario we're not building skill like we build skill with a plumber you know we hope that people never have to do this and so rather than teach them an acronym that they probably won't remember in the you know heat of the moment what we wanted to do for them was create a memory create an experience such that they we put them in the scenario and they had to maneuver through that scenario. So while virtual reality would be a great solution, what we did instead was we did kind of a la the Blair Witch movies where mm -hmm. we shot the whole thing on an iPhone and it was sort of a first person Facebook Live kind of a feeling. So yeah. I've got an example. I can show you a little bit of it if you're sure. interested. Yeah, that sounds yeah. good. Yeah, really. Very much so. See. All right. Good, good, good. So let me, I'll just show it on my second screen over here. And, and we can see it now. Can you see? Okay. Yes. So this is, I'm going to talk over it because this is a, just a video that we created. Um, Facing an active story, attacker in the workplace. Can't talk over it if I leave the audio up. Um, so the idea here was, as I said, an active, an active shooter is in the building. Now, our client did some interesting things with us. They told us that, number one, we could, we could show no violence. We could show no weapons. Yep. And we needed to also have a different learning path for, the, um, for, the, for North America and for the EU. Um, in America, crazy people come in with guns. In Europe, they tend to come in with knives or... Um, or bombs even. Um, so we had to, you know, give them a little bit of pathing going forward. But what we did was we hired um, local non-union actors. And uh, as you kind of see, the idea was the, the learner is actually the person sitting in that seat. And so everything that happens is you, you start with the sound of a gun and this person runs in and says, you know, there's a shooter, there's a shooter. And from that point on, you're kind of watching what's what's happening. 
Along the way, we stop and we ask you questions. So instead of you having the glasses on and pointing at things, we are just overlaying this on top of a, of a storyline file. And so you have to decide, what are you going to do? Are you going to run or are you going to hide? And so it's the classic run, hide, fight scenario. Mm -hmm. And our person here is deciding to run <laughs> and they get some feedback along the way. So the whole thing is shot in this sort of um, in the moment, people in front of you kind of a thing. Sometimes we'll stop along the way. This is at the, uh, you know, giving tips along the way. Just again, overlays on storyline um, instead of the full vir virtual reality. Uh, and we've put this in front of clients. Oh, this one's a really powerful moment. So this moment, this guy hides and you have to decide, are you going to get him to move with you or are you going to leave him? And as we've put this in front of people live, one of the things that we that happens when we do this is people get to that moment and they say, you know, I can't leave my friend. And it's so interesting to me that they actually say those words because they have put themselves into the scenario such that that person that was hiding is their friend. Hmm. Um, and so we would have people sitting, you know, at a conference or whatever, and they would say, I can't make this decision. And I'm like, but if you're in the active shooter situation, you have to make that decision. So we were really trying to create that memory, that sense, which I think is by and large, one of the really positive, great uses of, um, of, you know, of doing virtual reality instead of, you know, instead of just a, a regular class. But and I love the I love the approach you took experience. because it's very I it's agree. vivid and it I really agree. does put you in that first you know instead of first person shooter yeah. you're now the first person viewer you're looking at the shooter coming at you that's really yeah. clever yeah. yeah and you never see the shooter it's always just the people in the break room yeah um, are trying to figure out what to do and how to respond to it so imagine so that you actually tested their imagination I like that. Yeah, yeah we too. did. And we did, some. Good. I think, some really smart things yeah. in the shooting of it because we knew we couldn't reshoot. You know, we knew, I mean, we had one chance. We flew our client. I live in the Detroit area. We flew our client to Detroit. We had one shot at it. Hmm. And so um, he was right there. He was watching everything, you know, on a monitor in a room behind us. He had the ability to call cut if he needed to. Really good example of what happened that day. I don't know if you noticed, but there was a big... Uh, swell bottle, the big, you know, heavy metal uh, water bottles. Mm -hmm. And there was a section of the, the course that was, if you choose to fight, look around your environment and find stuff, you know, that you could use as a weapon. And so it was the same thing you saw there where you'd have kind of an overlay from storyline and you could click through the, you know, different items that you might use. Well, you know, we're working off of storyboards one of the actors just brought that water bottle in they just happened to have it and they had it right there on the table yeah. well the guy's the security guy our client's a security guy and he calls cut and he comes out to us and he said why isn't anybody picking up that heavy bottle it's a it's a great weapon and we said because it's not in the script <laughs> <You know? laughs> so we had to stop and rewrite the script because that had been in every shot prior so we couldn't, you know, it didn't make sense to go back and reshoot everything. So we just wrote it in as one of the weapons. You know, we did we did a similar, not, not like you guys did. I think you guys did a much nicer job than we did the way you filmed it and stuff. We relied on a video we were told to use, which was a FEMA video. I think it was FEMA. Yeah. No, it was Homeland Security video. And, and some of the video they did, considering it was done by Homeland Security, was awful. Like the the run, fight, hide. The the fight part was just idiotic. They had a woman with a purse just going after a guy who's got a big shotgun, and she's going, no, no, I'm going to get... She would have been dead in two seconds, and you're just going, why are they teaching this? This is not good. Um, because, again, it, it, it took just it out for, of context the friend. wrong way. It's, just, yeah, just yeah. for our friends in the UK, yeah. um, a purse in... A purse in the United a handbag. States is a handbag. A handbag. Yes. That's correct. A, a handbag. <laughs> uh, We've got, we, we we're occasionally translate to other people. We're, Amy, we're now getting more viewers in the UK um, <laughs> because Rick, you know, Rick's been very kind and we're now getting more people from the UK that are being interviewed on the show and that is increasing the... Um, 
what we're doing. So when the, this show will actually you know, be viewed by people in the UK. So it's just to explain, a purse is a handbag. A handbag. <laughs> a Roger. handbag. A bit like a booth and a stand. Yes. Yeah. You stand yeah. at the booth. <laughs> anyway. No, I, I honestly, I loved, I, and you and I were talking about that, um, that video the last time um, when, when, when we lost signal, because I think it's a great example of, um, of a simulation where people, okay, it's not, you don't have to wear virtual reality headsets, mm -hmm but you're actually simulating what was going on and you've got the bit in it, you know, you've got branching scenarios. So what do you actually do? Do you run? Do you hide? Do you fight? And then you can look at all the consequences because very often people don't think of the consequences of what they do. And now, I think you... that, that's important. Now, Amy, so, yeah. in, in the training, what happens if they made all the wrong choices? Do they get killed Does, or do we just kind of intimate, uh-oh, they're in trouble? Yeah, we do not take it to that level. Okay. Um, you know, you're, you're going, you're, you're done for. Um, but instead, we try to, you know, kind of redirect them as to why. For example, when mm -hmm. the when the a friend hides and you have to decide, do you try to get, you know, do you try to convince the friend or do you not try to convince the friend? The, the remediation, regardless of what you pick, is going to teach you the best choice is to run. You know, your best bet mm -hmm. at the most people being alive is <laughs> yeah. to go. Um, so we don't, yeah, we, we didn't take it all the way to just how bad it would be if you if you yeah. didn't get this one right. But interestingly, we were doing this for the client we were doing that for is um, Tiffany, the retailer. Hmm. And we were doing it for uh, the same content for another client, but we were doing an entire safety um you know compliance safety course right and active shooter got maybe two minutes and it was very much sort of here's the three-step process mm -hmm. here's what you do if somebody were to come in this way where might you hide and it not that it's terrible but it is so much more powerful and I think going back to kind of the original conversation the reason we're all so intrigued with virtual reality is it puts us in that position it puts mm -hmm. us in that place yeah. so what I like I also like about what you did you didn't beat it to the ground either it was pretty quick I mean you got to make your choices pretty quickly and yeah. it it just flowed and it was really yeah. cute and and the iPhone approach with the quick cam was great that was absolutely great yeah, it was really fun um, to do that, and you can get through the whole thing in about fifteen minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, unless you unless you decide you can't make decisions, but if you can make a good decision along the way, you can get through the whole thing in about fifteen sure. minutes. Um, yeah, so we did it all. Yeah, all iPhones. So, so another one of the things that when we go out in the world, that I, I, I think there's two that we've kind of chatted about peripherally here. One is um, micro learning. You know, mm -hmm. that is the buzz. Um, I just said I can't hear anything. Can you hear me, Rick? Yes. We, we, yeah. I, I typed that okay, message about 10 minutes ago I, or 20 minutes ago. I don't know why it came up just now. It was a little oh. Skype Skype glitch, I guess. I don't know. Gotta, gotta love technology. Uh. <clears throat> you know, why, why we work for these technology companies, you know, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Um, but there's two other trends that, you know, you just hear all the time and we are definitely getting our clients talking about them. And the one is micro learning, mm -hmm. whatever form or fashion of that, whatever meme that we're going to call that, you know, in 2019. Um, and the other is gamification. Yeah. And, you know, five, 10 years ago when we're at the conferences and they're saying gamification, you know, it was like, are people really willing? Are they doing that? Are they really doing that? And yeah, our clients expect it, they want it, they want us to be able to do that kind of a thing. And then micro learning is another piece of it, which often, you know, they sometimes go hand in hand. But the thing on micro learning that's frustrating me in the industry right now is, is that so many people think micro learning is teach everything you were going to teach anyway, and just try to do it as fast as possible. Right. Yeah. And we're, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you're right. A lot of people think 
micro learning is the whole thing in just a small no it's just part of it and it could be many things it doesn't have to be that short or that long it could just be focused on a, on a thing mm -hmm. now what you were what you were actually showing there in that video to me was mm -hmm. micro learning yeah. and gamification because there is a you, were learning, in it, isn't you were learning an awful lot in a very short time mm -hmm. and you were making choices and you know i i go back to the old you know some of the very old games that that i played when i was a youngster like mousetrap or whatever and at the end of it if you don't get it right you get caught in the mousetrap <laughs> and that was what would be happening <laughs> if you were caught with a shooter coming in the building so mm -hmm. you've got gamification there and it was done quickly, so micro learning. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between what you've just shown us and micro learning and gamification? There, not not a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, not not a lot. I think I think those, com those all those components are in there. But I, I think the one of the things that we really try to do when our clients are looking for those small, you know bite-sized nuggets, chunks, you know, we're hearing all the, the language as, as to what people come at, but it's to get narrowed on our, what we're trying to accomplish, you know, very, very clear, narrow focus. So we did another one actually for the same client. We did that course and kind of took it on the road and got some really good feedback. And so that same client came back to us and said, we want to do something really cool um, for another topic and see what kind of creativity you could put into it. And it's funny that you mentioned Mousetrap, Leslie, because this one, they really um, were in, very interested in gamification. And we brainstormed every game we played as a kid and could we make this, you know, could we apply that game to this and whatever. And we ended up making up our own, our very own game. Uh, it had nothing to do with anybody else's. And so this is our challenge this time, and I'll let it kind of play. This is just a video, kind of what I showed you, a video of a different course. Um, so let me get my screen back up. All right. So this one, this course is about shoplifting hmm. and actually catching a shoplifter. So it is still our high-end retailer, and um, there, is a, there is a lot of danger in high-end retail in – um, the PR nightmare that could be a yeah. bad capture. So we go into this course and we throw them into a game. We don't tell them anything. We don't teach them anything other than how to play this little game called Catch It. So you saw the instructions go up fairly quickly. Um, let me tell you what we're trying to do. These little boxes are coming in to the, to the playing area. And you see some of them are picking up silver balls. So the rules of this part of the game in level one are you're going to try to catch the right boxes. And the way to catch the right boxes is that you see the box enter the store, you see, or the room, you see it pick up a silver ball and it comes out. Now we've added in, in level two, these extra triangles at the top and the bottom. And now, same rules. You have to see the box come in. You have to see it pick up a thing, but you can't lose it in the boxes. Level three, we add more, and we're speeding this all up. You add another rule to it and another rule to it, and it's actually a pretty hard game to play um, as, you're, as you're trying to capture these little boxes. At this point, we're hoping the learner's kind of saying to themselves, what on earth are you doing? Immediately, we throw them into a video scenario where you see that woman just put the picture frame into her her back. In the video, you see all of these different people doing things. We ask them, you know, who do you think is a good capture? And then, and only then, do we back in and go, hey, by the way, we're teaching you things. There are five elements of proof, five elements of how to do a good capture. And then now we're in a teaching scenario, very similar to what you would, you know, expect, where we're teaching a little bit, learning a little bit, teaching a little bit. But we're bringing those elements of the course back in to try to make them remember through the game. So we didn't make the whole course the game like we did sort of with the active shooter. Here we used a game to launch them into the learning in the hopes that they will, you know, remember that along the way. 
again, what we're trying to get out of is, you know, when you're teaching um, security guards how to make a capture in a store, who, by the way, you know, number one, the things that people would steal at a store like Tiffany are the lower dollar items. Mm -hmm. So it would be better for them to walk out the door than it would be for the PR nightmare um, of that. So the woman who put the frame in her purse, when you back out of the whole story, um, first of all, we never saw her go into the store, which is the same premise as the as the boxes. Mm -hmm. So she can't be a good capture. But her story was her mother had just passed away and she was bringing that frame into the store to see if she could find a matching frame she couldn't so she took her own frame put it back into her purse mm. she would have been a bad capture so it is just that, that is part. like that's all building up the thing and now i know why you say your mouse trap was a good example because that is almost what you did playing the game mouse trap that as you went down the game all these youngsters will have no idea what mouse trap was <laughs> but, but it was fun. a game that, but you played it you built up till eventually you built this mouse trap and then went up it and the whole thing was could you capture at the end of it but it was it was about it was a building scenario yep. so yes i can now see where it fits in and it was a great game yeah it, yeah mousetrap was a great game and this one interestingly the feedback that we got from the security uh officers who were taking it um, the first feedback that that our client got was eh, we don't like this the game's too hard I can't get through it I don't understand what we're doing you're not you're not getting me and you know a lot of clients would say oh gosh you know we did user testing and our users don't like it but our clients kind of feisty and so she picked up the phone and started talking to the users and she said well tell me about the experience you had when you were playing the game we'll come to find out the people who thought it was too hard were doing it they were multitasking oh well i did it while i was on a conference call yeah uh, you know i'm just kind of doing it in my spare time which is how a lot of compliance training i mean it's the bad rap compliance yeah. training gets and she said don't do that take the course it won't take you that long give it your full attention and then call me back and once they gave it their full attention they said this is actually pretty brilliant you know it really yes. makes you think through because at the end of the day do you want to walk up to a security officer and say please list for me the five elements of proof that's not what matters what matters is are they going to make good captures and not you know, create PR nightmares. That's what you really want. Yeah, so. it's a it's a clever approach. It's a, I, I, so. I found it interesting like how it. you went from the game to boom. Well, we're in the store because that mm -hmm. gets your brain totally back into a different mode. And yeah. and at first, th did you notice that people at first had to think about it? why am I in the store? Wait a minute, what are we doing in the store? And yeah. and then they start seeing kind of from a different angle now things happening. Th that was clever. Yeah, it was a little it. disconcerting and it was interesting in our internal conversations. Um, originally, it was an either or proposition. We had a, you know, big brainstorming session and the woman, um, Sherry Simmons, was our writer on this. And when she took it out of the brainstorming session and some people were saying you should do video and rewind video so you could. And we did do a little mm. bit of that where you see them actually walking backwards and such. Okay. And that would have been the way to go. And then other people were like, no, it's gamification. You got to come up with a game. And we, we kept going to Clue. We kept thinking, you know, could we go back to that game Clue mm -hmm. that we all played? And she sort of put herself By in her way, room. In and the UK, it's Cluedo. Just Cluedo. Just so people oh. know Cluedo in the UK. <laughs> I did not know that. Cluedo. Um, yeah, Cluedo. But interesting. She went and put herself in a room, and you know how it is when you're trying to figure it out and you're kind of beating yourself up and what can I do? That she had this idea of it's not either or, it's both and. It's using yeah. a game mm -hmm. to put you into that real life to then, and then at the very end of the course, if you now are like, okay, I am going to beat it, you can play the game again, which I think is kind of fun. That's great. Yeah. Now, Amy, have you ever heard of nano learning? 
Is that even more micro? It's even more micro. For example, um, well, Harold's going to load up the game. He just did. And oh. we're done. How is that? <laughs> <laughs> not a learning it's all subconscious it gets in there eventually but it's a joke but <laughs> he's he's winding you up amy he is winding he you up he did uh, i fell for it so did i but <laughs> oh don't worry don't worry i did when he came when he came to the uk he had great fun great great fun <laughs> <laughs> did i <laughs> it was yes. fun. great it, it was fun. It was our trickster. first trip there, and we loved it. Oh, you so did. So we've did got to recently? get him. We, yeah, we've got it. We've got to now get him back because he came <clears> in <throat> in winter time. He came in February, so we now need to get him back in the summer time, where mm -hmm. the sun rises at the moment where I live. Rick, you'll be pleased to hear the sun now rises at five a.m. Oh, okay. and it's not long set. It goes and down about what is, nine or ten. Yeah. Yeah. And and we're not even at the longest day yet. And in Scotland it, it the days are even longer. Hmm. It's wonderful. Interesting. Love it. But love Amy, it. you you guys are really creative. I love what I love the way you approach the projects and, and the creativity that you have. You know, I never like that saying, you know, let's think out of the box because people usually go, Where's the box? It's like um <laughs> Well so, you've got but, the box. Yeah. What box? You've got the box with the balls yeah. in it. Yeah. But we no, you guys do a great job. It's it's really it's refreshing to see how you approach the situations and and the solutions. So that's really cool. Yeah, thank you very much. We actually uh, for quite some time we were going and and just as I said, sort of taking it in in the in the conference land, and then we got really passionate, especially about this whole micro learning mm -hmm. thing, and yeah. and really pushing our clients to you know, what's the, what's the purpose, the why, you know, what's the objective, why are we doing this? And the thing that I think is the hardest for the hardest thing for our clients to grasp is micro learning, in our opinion, isn't, as I said, about putting as much as you can in a short period of time. It's about creating a laser focus. Mm -hmm. And um, really on one of two things, because sometimes when we're doing a micro, uh, like maybe a skill builder or a small game, we're teaching a skill. So what skill are we trying to improve? But the other thing that we do so often in training that we have been kind of playing with in, in micro world is a mindset. You know, how do you change a mindset in some mm -hmm. kind of a way? And so we've done a couple of cool little things that are, um, you know, fairly simple and easy but um but they the the purpose of them is about changing mindset instead of of skill any interest in taking a look at one more sure all right so this one let's see we'll play this one kind of together this is one we did for a client uh sorry i'm sharing the wrong screen there let's see there we go um, this is one that we did for a client where we we walked through a process and said you know what is it that we're trying to accomplish and the problem that we identified with them is that there are that people just have too many meetings. So that's pretty common, right? We hear mm -hmm. that kind of a thing all the time. Our meetings are not effective. We have too many meetings. And so instead of teaching, you know, in this little micro, and this one, if we slow down, you can get through it in maybe two minutes. It might be nano, Rick. It <laughs> might be. <laughs> it's close. <laughs> uh, so what we're what we're asking them to do is understand the value of their meeting or the cost of their meeting. So the first thing they do is you they think of a specific meeting and how many people attend. So let's pretend like we have a staff meeting. We have 11 people in our staff. Great. We have 11 people in our staff. Now we got to get the next question. This is not very optimized for the screen, is it? Um, so what is the hour, average hourly wage for the attendees? You want to make them, what do you think, maybe $60 25. per hour? Oh, we're going to go cheap. <laughs> okay. um, 60 is good. 60 is good. Okay, so we'll do 60. And again, this is something that can be done on a spreadsheet, but people like to play, right? Mm -hmm. So these little fun things, how long is the meeting? Well, it's a monthly staff meeting, so we keep them in there for an hour and a half. Great. How often do we do it? Oh, I just said, it's a monthly meeting. 
So now, remember what our goal is. It's not to build a skill. It's to change a mindset. Mm -hmm. So we ask, say, you know, how do you feel about the meeting when you know it's costing you almost $12,000 a year to have it? Very simple. As I said, yeah. if, if I weren't yeah, talking the through other, And the other thing, I don't know if you added it in, but the other thing, and, and I used to do this time and time and time again, was when people were having meetings and how much is their travel cost? And not only their travel cost, how much time did it actually cost them to, you know, in, in hours and in minutes, did it cost them to get to that meeting where they could have actually been doing other things or to get home? And I used to, oh, I'm afraid I was somebody that was, um, maybe it's the canny Scott in me, but that was something <laughs> that I used to say all the time, you know, how much are the meetings costing? And that's when I started using virtual meetings. I said, why are we bringing everybody to the office? We don't need to. Mm -hmm. We can still, <laughs> we can still chat. We can still meet up at night, but we don't have to have this monthly meeting that's costing a fortune. And if we are, how are we making sure we're getting value for money from that meeting? Right. And, and I think what, that like this micro tool, that's, I mean, there's a lot of learning. If we were to be teaching this in a class on how to do effective meetings, so much of what you said, Leslie, are the things we'd want to teach. But this little teeny tool just gets them in the mindset to be open mm -hmm. to the concept. And, and it's really interesting because most people when they work, especially in a big corporation, they have no idea anything costs anything. Yeah. It's so <laughs> abstract that you know, when you come and you say, well, this meeting just costs 12000 for a year. Oh, what? All of a sudden, the mm -hmm. eyes open and go, 12000 yeah, yeah. Think about that. Mm -hmm. And and it's, it's amazing. It, you're right. It is a complete change of mindset, and it puts value into something that had no yeah. value whatsoever. Mm -hmm. and, or said differently, yeah. if you had to cut, you know, when we say in, in the corporate world, you know, cut 10% out of your budget, do people think of meetings as an opportunity? Probably not. But this tool might help them get there. That's so that's right. kind of where we're going in that micro, mm -hmm. you know, what are you trying to accomplish and can you do it in a clever way that's not necessarily about teaching and we let either use it as a tool so that you can have those conversations, but really trust the learner that they can take that little teeny tiny uh, course and do something with it. Think about it. Change a behavior as a result of it. Yeah. And, and it's like, what, five minutes and all of a sudden now you've got oh. them thinking. Apologize. That's great. Yeah, it, it can't even be five. I mean, it's it, it takes less than a minute to actually right. do the the, yeah. the the concept. So, yeah. yeah, so those are some of the things. I mean, as we think about what, what clients are coming to us and asking about, they are still asking, I mean, we, you know, pretty regularly get this question. Are people really doing, like, do you have other clients who are doing virtual reality or, you know, 360 video or that kind of a thing? Um, but, you know, we, we definitely get clients, as I said, we want to make a game of it. We want to do it quickly. We want to, you know, zero in on a, a subject matter. So kind of going back to the original, you know, concept is, you know, how do you know when things are trends and how do you know when they're, you know, actually going to, you know, are they trends? Are they fads? Are we really going to pick them up and use them? So we had another uh, client recently who really wanted a 360 video in their course. Mm -hmm. And uh, they they talked about it from the very beginning. They came to us with some really good ideas themselves. They're a really creative group. And they said, you know, and they would call at the end of every module, they would have whatever their big build for that module would be. And in one of them, it was, I want 360 video. And um, so, you know, I took it all in. That's great. I got on the phone with them one day and I waited until we got to the content area where this 360 video was going to be important. And it was a group of physicians mm -hmm. and the video that they wanted was the um, was a 360 of a of a patient room before a procedure. And what are all the things you needed? So it was really about building an equipment checklist mm -hmm. for what you needed for any for a particular procedure and these were anesthesiologists 
And um, so in talking sorry, to the client, who was really excited I'm about the solution. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I'm going to have to love you and leave you because it's now quarter to 11 at night, UK oh. time. So I'll let the two of you carry on, but I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to shoot off because I say it's uh, it's now eleven forty ten forty five. Right. <laughs> okay. 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 Cheers, we'll see you guys. later, Leslie. Bye. Thanks. Bye. We're going on a little oh. long today, but that's good. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I thought we had a little. I thought. I guess I had the time wrong. So I no, no. Your time story. was perfect. It's just that we usually do about a half hour show, but we're we're extending. Okay. Okay, well, we, I'm sorry if we, we need to go. No, no, um, I'll just finish this quickie and then we can go. But when I actually got in and was talking to the, to the client and said, you know, what are we trying to accomplish? And really, the, what they were trying to accomplish was this passion around creating a checklist. Mm. And ask yourself, well, 360 is cool, but is that really going to get you what you want? You know, I don't think it would. I, don't, I mean, so we ended up throwing it out. We didn't do it. And I think yep. they come because they hear it's the cool thing, not because they really think of it as the appropriate learning tool. Right. And really, the checklist wouldn't make wouldn't do justice to what the anesthesiologists are doing because they're not going to look around the whole room. They're not going mm -hmm. to. They, they usually know what equipment they need and what's supposed to be in a drawer or what a nurse hands them. So, the, yeah, you're right. Oh, that wasn't have, the right probably have approach to have for that checklist. one. checklist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was about the checklist, not about the, you know, the room in essence. So anyhow. Yeah. Well, Rick, thank you so much for having me. I'm oh, on, on the contrary. Thank you for coming back on the show. And, and that was wonderful. I think you, you did a great job of showing three different ideas and how you approach them and, and what you can do. And, and it's good. It's good creative juices. So that's yeah, fun. I love the creative juices. <laughs> They're fun. They're fun. Yeah. Uh, so no, we really appreciate you coming on and sharing. And um, how can people get uh, best get a hold of you? Uh, yeah, artisanelearning.com. Um, it's on the screen right now. That's probably the easiest way. And hit contact us, and you'll come straight to me. So that sounds good. That sounds good. So All you right. heard her. Contact her down below, and we'll put your link down below also on the show notes. All right. Thanks, Greg. So that's good. Well, Amy, appreciate you coming on again and, and great, great show and great sharing. So again, thank you for that. And if you're watching the show, please don't hesitate to get in touch with Amy and her group. They do great work, as you've seen today. And, and we'll see you next week on eLearn Chat. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, Amy. Thank you, everybody. Bye. It's a wrap.